I'm Joe Fernandez, and I'm a program manager in the AirBuilder team. And uh, if you don't know what AirBuilder is, it's the no-code AI experience for the Power Platform. So it allows you to very easily create AI for your business processes that you can then add to your Power Apps or flows in, in Power Automate in a very easy way. Excited to show you the latest uh, enhancements to the AI Builder. So it's been a good and a busy start of the year for AI Builder. A number of enhancements that we shipped in the last uh, few weeks. The first one, which is a pretty cool one, is the text recognizer control in, in Power Apps. So now what you can do is you can add this uh, control into your apps. And every time you take a photo, this control is going to extract all the text that's present in the photo. And the control is interactive. So if you see in the example here, I've taken a photo of an electricity meter and I can tap on the actual reading and I can then bind into a, to a text input, for instance. So pretty cool. So if you haven't had a chance to test it, I encourage you to do so. The second enhancement that shipped uh, last week is for the prediction scenario. So with the prediction scenario, what you can do is predict if a business outcome is going to happen in the future based on historical data. And up until a few days ago, you could only uh, do prediction on a single CDS entity. Now we've released two enhancements. The first one is that you're able to predict over uh, more than one entity, so related entities in CDS, as well as uh, having the possibility to filter over the data. So maybe you don't want to predict over all your historical data, but uh, given a date range or a geography, you can now apply filtering to, to the data you're going to predict. And the third one, which we've received a lot of feedback, is around uh, simplify how you can use your AI builder models in, in Pro Automate. So when we launched the preview of, uh, of AI Builder last, uh, last June, we received a lot of good feedback around, uh, hey, uh, this is cool, but uh, using AI Builder in Pro Automate, it's, it's difficult. Um, if, at, at, the, at a point that even with other documentation, it was very complex. So we release end of January, so end of uh, last uh, month, uh, an update that makes it simpler. And you can see some of the attendance of the call uh, here reflected. Uh, there was a lot of excitement around it, so no more complexity, never again the complexity. Uh, so that was good to see. And uh, I'll post also a link to so Eric Sovi, who is an MVP, uh, did a great blog post on what was the experience before and what's the experience now. Uh, so if you're curious to see what are the changes, that is a great resource to, to look into. And I think the best way to show it is uh, through a demo. So I'm going to show um, how you can, once you finish training an uh, AI model, you can very easily uh, use it in Protomit. So let's do that. Hey, Joe, does AI Builder currently only support CDS as its data source? It depends on the scenario. For prediction, yes. But you could leverage, for instance, data flows to bring data from outside sources into CDS. For for the scenarios, you can bring uh, data like object detection and form processing. I think believe in the next week, you're going to be able to bring your images and documents from SharePoint, from OneDrive, from even uh, Azure Blob Storage. The classification today is just it's CDS only. So depending on the scenario, it depends. But then there's ways where the, you can, uh, if you don't have your data in CDS, you could, uh, using data flows, uh, bring it uh, into CDS. Okay, that makes sense. So I'm here in um, AI Builder, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to train a form processing model uh, to, to speed up the demo. I've already started the process, and I'm training here a model to be able to extract uh, data from invoices. And uh, I'm, I'm in the step of the wizard where I'm asked which uh, fields that have been detected I want to use in my model. So for this demo, I'm going to say that I'm interested in using the invoice ID and the total amount. So I'm going to click done. And then, uh, so I go next, and I train the model. Because I only uploaded uh, five uh, documents, training should be very fast. So let's see. OK, the training is complete. And once you train the model, you go into what we call the model details page, where you can see a summary of the model that you just trained. And in order to use it either in Power Apps or in Power Automate, you need to publish it. So let's do that. Let's uh, click Publish. And once it's published, I can, I can use it in, 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 both of, in both apps. So let me go to uh, Power Automate. 
And now uh, let's create uh, together a flow uh, that leverage this uh, model that we just trained. So the easiest way to, to start, if, if you search AI Builder in the Protomate portal, you will uh, see a series of templates, which we launched uh, last week. So we have one to quickly start with phone processing, which is uh, this one. Click a button to read information from uh, documents. You'll, you'll find here some uh, links to documentation. If you haven't used the uh, phone processing before AI Builder, you can go here and, and, and we'll explain you how to do so. So let's go ahead and create this, uh, this flow based on the template. So first thing I need to do is uh, in the predict step, I need to choose a model. So let's choose the one that we just trained, which is called Community Call from Processing Model. This one, the template would already will uh, prefill the document type and document that will come from the trigger that we have on the first step. And since uh, Matthew showed us before Teams integration, let's also do something with Teams. So what I'm going to do is, what I want is every time a form is processed by the predict action, I want to post the invoice ID and the total amount into a Teams channel. So I'm going to select the Microsoft Teams connector, post a message, and I select my team, which in this case is Fourth Coffee, the channel. I uh, have a channel where I see all the invoices that have been automatically processed by a builder. And I can do something like new invoice process. And I want to display the invoice ID. And the total amount, uh, total amount. And if you use our previous experience, you might recall that you need to do some complex JSON parsing. That is no longer the case now. You see all the information from the model right here. So you just have to click. So I want to show the value here. And I want to show the, the total value here. And we should be good to go. Maybe we can increase the font here so we can read a little bit better. And uh, I hope that OK was uh, ex excitement around, around this. <laughs> so let's go ahead and save the flow. And let's run it to see how, how it works. To... So the flow is safe. And I'm going to so trigger the flow manually. And it's going to ask me, OK, please provide me a document and the document uh, type. So well, first, I need to send it to Teams. I'm sending to Teams. That's good. So I'm going to select the document, and I should have one here. And this one is interesting because this one has been manually modified, and it's handwritten the invoice ID and the, and the total amount. Which uh, So we added 100 support a, a few months ago, and it's uh, one of the most liked features that we have. And in this case, it's a JPEG file. So let's run the flow. OK. So now the trigger is set, predict will run, and it will call the AI Builder model that will train and extract the data and post uh, what we wrote into the Teams channel. So now if we go to Teams, there we go, uh, new invoice process, the invoice ID, and the total amount. If we compare the file to check the did it, it right, so invoice ID 17542, good, and $950.30. Uh, there you go. So this is the new improved experience to consume AI Builder model in Pro Automate. There's still a job to be done, uh, so we're actively working on making it even more easier and uh, more discoverable AI Builder in Pro Automate. So I hope you like it and you and you leverage in uh, your thoughts. This is outstanding, Joe. Lots of great feedback in the chat. Myself included, I was just saying, like, just imagine five years ago how long it would take to write the code to do what you just did there. And if you were doing that as fast as you could, not explaining it, I bet you could do it in two minutes. <laughs> there were a couple questions that popped up. One was, do I have to have my model as well as my flow in the same solution for this to work? I'm going to guess you're going to probably say, no, they don't have to be, but <laughs> I figured I'd ask. They need to be in the same environment, but not in the same solution. That makes sense. So you could update your model independently from your flow that way. All right. Yeah. What happens if I make a model and I've got V1 of my model out there and I'm 
I'm, I'm running it, you know, and I'm, I'm tuning it as time goes by. And I have a couple flows hooked to that model. And now I update the model. Do the flows automatically pick that update up? Or do I need to tell those flows, hey, I want you to use the next version of the model I just published? So every time when you train a new version of the model, you're going to be asked to publish it. Once mm -hmm. it's published, it, flow will automatically take it. So you don't need to modify the flow to consume it. The only thing oh. to add is if, let's say that you're doing invoice processing and you change, like you add more values or you remove values that were yeah. there before, then you will need to update the, the flow. But if you don't make any breaking change, you're just like adding new data set to improve the, the model, then it's, it's fine. It will be fine. Cool. And what would you recommend from like a, a development to test to production progression as you have, let, let's just take the case, let's say just exactly what you built here. You have one model and, and this flow. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to stand up development, test, and production, how would you do that? Would you use three environments, or would you do it all within one environment and copies of everything? What would be your recommendation? Yeah, so that's a very good uh, topic, and maybe something that we can demo in the in the April uh, community call. Because uh, so today, with the exception of the, the prediction scenario, you cannot add AI models to a solution. So the best way would be to you add your, your AI builder model into a solution and you move it around the environments. But this is not supported for today for the majority of, of the models. So from processing, object detection, text classification don't support this today. We're adding support for solution aware uh, AI models in April. So then once that's in place, then having those models and those flows and those apps in the same solution uh, moving that across the environment will be the the, the recommended approach. Gotcha, today, cool. you need, today, you, today you will need to, um, so if you create a new environment, recreate the model in the new environment. Right on. That makes sense. Okay. Well, I will be in touch with you then to have you come back in April and show that off once it's once it's shipped as well. Definitely, yeah. My pleasure. That sounds good. Hey, Joe, uh -oh. I have a quick question for you. Do all models now support versioning? I think the only one that used to before was the object recognition. Yes. So all except from pressing. So that that is going to be added okay. in April as well. So in the April demo, we'll also show the versioning of from pressing. Awesome. Thank you. That's awesome. Thanks again. Really appreciate you coming on and sharing this really cool stuff with us today. And uh, this is amazing technology. You must have really fun on a day to day basis working on this and all the neat things that it can make so easy to do. It is, and, and, and you were spot on, uh, Todd, what you said like a few years ago, like building your own AI model, your app, your automation, it would have taken uh, days, if not months of, of work. Oh, yeah. And, and now with a platform. Build the authentication into it, all the API connections you need to stand up and, and then connect and consume, yeah. It's just absolutely amazing. It's getting closer and closer to uh, what we watched in Star Trek growing up when people would just talk to the computer and it would do things.